Hey, thanks for joining me in the studio. I'm Richard Robinson. Today we're looking at painting mountains and I want to give you five keys to mastering painting mountains. What's its name again? Uh, Paradise Valley <laughs> in the South Island of New Zealand, which is one of my favorite, favorite spots. I think it is the favorite. So this is, I think, my all-time favorite place in the world to paint. This is Paradise Valley in the South Island of New Zealand. One of those amazing spots that if you go there and set up your easel, the painting is pretty much done for you. All you have to do is put it on the canvas and you feel like a master artist because normally you have to move things around. But at Paradise, it's actually called Paradise, uh, you, it's right there. All you need to do is put a frame on it and you're done. Now, saying that, I did move a couple of things around just because I can't help fiddling. Um, one of those was including this little gap here, which is actually there. It's just a little bit to the left. I've just moved along a little bit and that gives you this neat road, well, river pathway through to the mountains, right? The next thing I did was the, the lighting. Now, this is really important as I added this big soft shadow in the foreground and put the light where I wanted it in the midground and on the mountains. Okay, that's really key. It's something that beginner painters don't really think about. They just try and copy the scene or the photo that they're working from. But what I love to do is to change the lighting effect through the whole painting. So it really drives the eye to the center of interest and creates just a more interesting painting. So let's get into the five key tips for painting better mountains. First one is drawing, and that means interesting shapes, right? It's something that beginners get wrong a lot, and that is just oversimplifying shapes and repeating shapes. So what you want to do is look at the unique character of each mountain and don't simplify it too much. And also, if there's a difference between mountains, try and exaggerate those differences. Try not to make them look all the same like cookie cutters. Every great mountain painter has at some point exaggerated the scale, the size of a mountain, and also the steepness of it, because we love looking at drama. Key number two is homogeneous color or atmospheric perspective. Just how colors change as they go back into the distance. Basically what happens is that you get more and more atmosphere between you and the mountains as it recedes into space. You can think about it like more and more veils of atmosphere. Now the atmosphere, because of the water in it and the dust, and also the color of the light, has a certain color to it. Now what I, where I find that color is in the sky just above the object that you're looking at, right? And so basically these mountains, as they get further and further into the distance, become more like the color of that sky. So you've got your colors for your shadow and your light. And as they go into the distance, the contrast between those two colors gets less and less and they get cooler. If you have a blue atmosphere back here and they become more like the color of the atmosphere. Now I show you how to do that mixing paint on the palette in the full lesson, but that is the general idea. And if you get that right, that gives you this huge depth in a painting. The third key is adding mist or atmosphere to the bottom of the mountains. And you'll see this in so many paintings of mountains. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. It's just it's like if you buy a green car, you'll see green cars everywhere. Well, this is just the same. This mist really helps to separate those layers of mountains. You see I've added mist or atmosphere at the bottom here, and that just gradually fades up into detail there. And I've also added it to the base of these ones here and each successive layer 
right as it goes back and what that does by separating those layers is it actually makes the painting easier to read from a distance which is like when you're sitting across the room from a painting and my general rule of thumb is if you can if a painting reads well at the size of a postage stamp then that's a really strong design now there's two other things that that adding that mist does for a painting it adds a sense of sort of mystery or uh, romance to a painting and it also adds more variety more color variety into the painting and that makes it more interesting to look at now brushwork is the fourth key right now you'll notice in the mountains here what i do is basically make the brushwork smaller and a little thinner so the paint application is thinner it's less impasto it doesn't stick out from the surface as much and as we move forward in space the brushwork gets larger and it gets thicker more impasto more chunks in the paint so what that does is create this another an added sense of depth in the painting normally take we take our depth cues from um, overlapping shapes from value change in value and change in color right but as a painter what you can do is add this extra layer of depth by changing the brushwork as we go back into the distance key number five is spotlights so you'll notice that certain areas of the mountains are spotlit and so there's more light here on the top of the mountain and it basically fades out as we go further away from that spot similar story here there's more light and then it fades out and i actually do that with most areas and most big shapes in the painting so you can see here there's more light here and less light over here less light over there more light here and then just fades away even the sky more well, there's a spotlight in the sky there fades away gets gradually darker and on the whole painting i've got this big spotlight in the middle here and then fades away fades away fades away so the whole thing is a is a spotlight and then on the major items we have spotlights as well now this big soft shadow in the foreground like i mentioned before is designed to take you into the painting because basically our eyes don't really dwell in the shadows for very long we don't get a lot of information the more light there is the more information our eyes and our brains have to work with so when we're looking at things we tend to look at the areas that have light on them the areas that have the most contrast the punchiest colors and the sharpest edges so when you know that you can orchestrate your paintings to use that information to your benefit so for instance you'll have softer edges on the outsides of the paintings and sharper edges in the center you'll put your punchiest color in the center of the painting or wherever you want your center of interest to be you'll put your thickest paint in the center of interest because when a light is shining on those they cast these fine little details which are you could consider them as little brush strokes but they just cast shadows right and those fine little details are something that your eye loves to look at so those are the five key tips to painting better mountains and of course i go into those in more depth in the full lesson which is over two and a half hours long so if you're interested in painting better mountains um, i encourage you to go and take a look at getting the full lesson and i look forward to seeing what you do with it because at the end of the lesson you can upload your photo to the website and so other students and myself can look at it and comment on it and because i love to see you know what you get out of this because it's not just about copying what i'm doing it's about taking the concepts and applying those to your own work so that you become more happy with your own painting so come join me in the lesson at mypaintingclub.com and i look forward to seeing what you come up with and if you're watching this video on youtube and you enjoyed the video please do consider pressing the like and subscribe button and that helps with all sorts of techie things like improving the something of the something so that'd be nice and <laughs> i'll see you on mypaintingclub.com all right happy painting <laughs>